Welcome to the Beyond Jiu Jitsu podcast, episode number 105. Today, Adam and I, Kieran, are talking about the top five guard passing advice for white belts. Or for all belts. For everyone. Yeah. Works works for white belts, blue belts, not purple belts, but works for brown and black too. Yeah, just not purple. Just Your not purple, purple belt. Forget just, about it. Switch it off. Yeah. No, Stop yeah. Listening. So, um, I mean, labeled top five guard passing advice, tips, concepts for, for white belts. Mm. But uh, in my experience, this could be absorbed for any belt, right? And not necessarily the top five need to know, if you will, because it's all relative. I mean, uh, I saw someone else. I don't know if you know who Jonathan Thomas is. No. Uh, he's a He's got a really good YouTube channel. He's super – man, he's really, really good. Check him out. Anyway, he has a similar video or something. There's heaps of these sort of videos, right? Oh, yeah. And one of the things he said was a great piece of advice. Would I put it in my personal top five? No. But like would I say it doesn't deserve to be in a top five? No. Like it's fucking great advice. So it's all relative, but these are ones that for me and in my experience and the way I see jujitsu progressing at the moment, these are five super important ones that should – eliminate some common mistakes and also just help change the way you think about passing, whether it's gi or no gi. Sounds brilliant. How's your guard passing, Kieran? Pretty good. That's like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. My uh, foot relative, everything's relative. Uh, for, for a blue belt, I think I'm doing pretty well. With guard yeah. You passing. pass the odd white belt every day. Yeah. Day yeah. Day. You know, yeah, depending on the white belt. Yeah. yeah you got to yeah. soften them up first with a knee on belly. And then <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Off uh, we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. You gotta soft, yeah, you soften them up with a knee on belly, go back to their guard. Yep, correct. <laughs> <laughs> and then I could pass. <laughs> uh, so just a quick little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I just want to quickly mention a shout out to Charles. Charles is a new Patreon, but more importantly than that, new member of the gym. He's actually someone who came to the gym through listening to the podcast and – Wanted to train at the gym, couldn't find somewhere to live in the area, ended up living a bit further away and then you know, a couple of months ticked by and he reached back out and he was like, man, I feel like I know you now through the podcast and it's going to be worth a little extra uh, commute. So he's like, if you'll still have me, I said, Charles, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Lost your chance. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, and obviously – I said, doors always open and now Charles trains with this and it's awesome. And yeah, he's, he's gone on to become a Patreon. Uh, so Charles, welcome to the Patreon. Welcome to the gym. I mean, obviously I see you almost every day, but you know, welcome yeah, to the gym. this is official shout out. Welcome. Welcome a shout out. And uh, yeah, I've had a few roles with Charles now and it's good roles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good ad- addition to the gym. The other two things I just want to quickly mention, we're not, talking about it today. Obviously we're talking about guard passing today, but we, it's been a little while since recording sessions because we recorded an episode in advance and whatever, because we knew Kieran was away for a week for work. He was traveling. So we missed a week of recording. And in that time we had the, the who's number one event and the tragic passing of Leandro Lowe. So we're not going to it's not this episode to talk about low and that event and everything that happened with it. That's a different conversation, but just wanted to mention it. You know, it's obviously we're aware that that, that happened. It's super, super sad. And um, yeah, I just wanted to, I just didn't want to not mention it because yep, yeah. it's such a, such a shockwave moment through the jujitsu community and the sport and anyone, you know, it affected so many people. I never personally knew Leandro. Um, I'd never met him, uh, but I know heaps of people who did. I know heaps of people who had competed against him and I hear nothing but nice things about him. I knew, I know he was a bit of a party animal from what I've, I'm told, but yeah, everything I've heard, he was just such a genuine, nice person. It's so tragic. And um, yeah, but I, I do want to give a little tidbit of information that I only just found out uh, I didn't know this actually, but <laughs> just to connect it to Gordon Ryan. So in which one was it? Uh, so in the 2017 North American trials, I believe it was, uh, Gordon Ryan lost to Leandro Lowe. Oh, there match. you go. 
And um, and Anthony was telling me this, and he's my in, you know, our the yes. gym's encyclopedia of yes. jujitsu information. He is. And he was just kind of like, oh yeah, it's you know quite funny if you think about it. Like that'll be the 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 one match that you know Gordon will never get to undo. You know, like so it'll be the it since, right. Yeah, you know, and apparently they had a match scheduled for November oh, th- wow. this okay. year. You know, and um, I don't know. Like, ob- ob- <laughs> obviously, Leandro has um, an eight-time world champion, and you know, multiple Copa Poggi champion, and he has had nothing left to prove in jujitsu. Yeah. But it's also like, you know, kind of puts a smile on my face to go like. Oh, yeah, and he can go down in history as like having beaten Gordon and Gordon can never get that yeah, back. Undefeated against Gordon. You know, right? yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, totally. And, yeah, but uh, anyway, that's not the topic of today. Very, very sad. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, let's let's get on to talking about some top five guard passing advice for white, blue, suck at purple belts, brown and black belts. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um. So like I, like I always like to do before we go into one of these sort of episodes, I do want to ask what would be obviously a lot of this information you hear from me in classes and whatever and other episodes we've done. But before I go through the five, give me what you think if you were giving some advice to someone, what would be an important advice, concept, detail to improve guard passing? So I'd say I'd tackle this from a conceptual standpoint, first and foremost, and I would talk the person through the progressive passing of the legs. So first of all, you need to beat the feet and the shins. Then you can be operating between the knee and the thigh. Then you need to beat knee and thigh, and then you can pass the guard. So basically I, I worded that very poorly, but talk about how someone's legs when you're passing their guard, uh, it, it's segmental, if that makes sense. So you need to pass the, the shin before you can operate in the knee and thigh and then pass through there. That That's more for a pressure pass style. Um, and then on top of that, I would then talk about the different methods or styles of passing guard. So you have your head first, you have knee first, you can go around the guard, you can go through the guard or you can un- under the guard effectively. So I just highlight those three different concepts of how to pass guard. And then each of those three have their own little advice within advice, if that makes sense. So, yeah. yeah I should have foreseen you just regurgitating stuff I've told you in the past. Yeah. What, what would you yeah, expect? No, no, no. Yeah, no, that was, that was perfect. <laughs> so one of the, the, the initial one you said is not on my list, but like I said at the start, you know, doesn't mean it's, mm. this is not an all inclusive list right there's more than you could argue there's 20 fundamental things you need to know whatever uh but the one you mentioned about you know segmenting the legs it was very important to understand that the legs uh do like parts of the legs can move to a certain degree independent to the rest of the legs Uh, but that operating past the knee line into that in between the knee and the hip in that thigh area i often give this what are we Eight minutes in, time for an analogy, people. Buckle the fuck up, right? (laughs) I often give this example where I say, okay, if you can – knee line is a very – not clickbait, like a – Ambiguous term? No, no, no. Like it's very like in vogue at the Uh, moment, the the word knee line because, you know, when you're talking about leg locks and whatever. But it's also a word I use to talk about guard retention – you know, you don't want to lose your knee line, uh, depending on the guard, right? There's always exceptions to every single rule in in jujitsu. But if you're talking about passing the guard and then clearing their knee line, so you get past their their feet, their shins, their knees, and then you're operating in the thigh area, right? Even if you don't know what you're doing and you just remain in that thigh area opportunities will start to present themselves. And the analogy I give is let's say we're playing like any sport that's on a court or a field, could be basketball, uh, rugby, football, as in soccer, whatever, right? So that operating in the thigh area is kind of like, hey, if you just keep the ball in their half of the court or their half of the field, it's going to be very hard for them to score and more scoring opportunities will present themselves to you. 
just just the you know that's easier said than done right but that's the analogy i give think about operating in that thigh area it's keeping the ball in their half of the court right so obviously more scoring opportunity or keeping the puck on that half of the ice whatever bloody sport it is but you know what i mean totally but yeah so that's a a, a perfect concept let's go on to the five that i've chosen for today the first one, and this is not just for white belts, man, for everyone, but this is myself. I've been guilty of this. I still make this mistake, okay, which is not going into their guard in the first place. Now, what do I mean by that? Yeah. Okay. Too often people just go, oh, okay, I'll, uh, I'll step into their guard so they – they step a foot in, the person establishes De La Hiva and they grab a sleeve and a collar and then the person on top starts passing and they do all this work to, to you know, break the collar grip and, you know, strip the sleeve grip and grab the pants and then to start their pass, okay? Why do all that work just to go back to where you were prior to any grips being established? So the way I like to explain it to people is I go, we very – or like we we naturally go, oh, you know, I'm I'm passing someone's guard or I'm in their guard and I need to pass it. And I go, no, no, man, like they're not in – I'm not in their guard. They're in my pass, right? So I like I don't think about it as, oh, I need to pass their guard. I'm in their guard. No, 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 I was never in their guard. Like they're in my pass. They're struggling to – like they're the ones who are desperate to establish a guard. I never even let that shit happen. Ideally, right? You know, obviously there's plenty of people in the world good enough to establish a guard on me. And, but, you know, that's the concept I'm trying to make. You know, don't think of, like, don't let them establish a guard. Obviously it happens, right? But you should be thinking about it like they're in your pass, not you're in their guard, right? Obviously when you're playing guard, it's the opposite, right? You're thinking, I've got to get them in my guard and establish their guard. But my students who, resonate with this concept they make it very difficult even for me even like yourself you know the 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 lower like you know not not the white belts but let's say like the blue belts the competitive blue belts will make it hard for me to establish a guard because they've absorbed this concept that i kind of repeat over and over in the gym that man like what are you doing like you just you just like walked into their guard right you just like or even worse, like you just went into their clothes guard. What are you doing? Like they tried to get clothes guard and then you just dropped down to your knees. Why? Like now what? So just so you can stand back up again, you know? So if you can have that shift in the way that you think about it and put them into your pass, don't let them put you in their guard, I guarantee you it'll be similar to the last one I said where you're operating in the thigh zone. Even if you're just doing that, Honestly, I, if, if you don't know what to do and I said to you, man, all I want you to focus on is not letting them establish a guard. Like just like, just do, you know, just swat shit away. Don't let them establish a guard, whatever. Just that simple act will present way more guard passing opportunities. All right? Make sense? Totally. And I love that once I really absorb the, hey, don't let them, don't walk into their guard because you're right, like, it's such a habit. It's such like a complacency. It's you, you let them establish and then, and then you're like, then, Oh, then we start. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You're when like, you let to, them yeah, establish yeah. and you go like, Oh, now the role starts. Yeah. Fuck no, man. No, the role man. started like when, you know, when you fucking high five knuckles, let's yeah, go. That's right. It's, yeah. it's not, you know, we're not saying to like surprise them and go, ah, and, and like go cheap <laughs> shot, but you know, let them get settled as in they're ready for the role and then don't, don't let him establish a guard. Yeah. Don't yeah. walk. If that guy's got a really good De La Hiva, stop putting your fucking leg out. Stop yeah. letting him get De La Hiva. It makes sense. sense. Imagine if you did it the other way around. Imagine if when you were playing guard, you let someone, you know, get double unders with a collar grip mm. and then you're like, ah, oh, now I'll start playing guard. It's ridiculous. No, why? why would you do that? Why would you do that? You just wouldn't. But, but we, we have this bad habit of doing it when we're, when we're passing. Yeah, totally which is a super, super shit thing to do. You're just creating more unnecessary work for yourself, right? There's other times you can do that. It's when you're doing specific training. When you do start in someone's spider guard or mm. half guard or whatever it is. But in terms of 
okay, I'm wanting to improve my passing. That's why you're listening to this episode. Stop walking into people's guards for free. Of course, there'll be plenty of times that you give 200% to not let them establish a guard and they still establish a guard. That's okay, jiu-jitsu. because yeah. ju- passing someone's guard is not that easy, right? Uh, but yeah, that is a definite bad habit that everyone is guilty of. Everyone has done it where you just go, dip, 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 <laughs> and walk into their garden, you know, fuck, just give yourself more work. I think the De La Hiva one is a particularly good example because if they get De La Hiva with like, you know, collar, collar grip or something, you, like you said, you're spending all that energy to break the collar grip, like pop the hook, and then you literally back to where, where you started. You, where you literally started. where you like started. Like what, yeah. Like the exact same position. Yeah. But you had to do so much work to get there. It yeah, doesn't well, make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's so funny. But it kind of, <laughs> but um, the, it's a good segue mentioning De La Hiva because it kind of leads me to my next one, which is uh, you brief, this is also one that you briefly touched on, which is understanding that there's four, there's two different styles, let's say, of it, like I'm really trying to simplify it, right? But mm. I, you know, Again, there's exceptions to every rule, but I think if I was to, without having to make, here are the million different variations. We want to make it more digestible. There are two different styles of passing, let's say, and all passes will fall into one of four categories. So the two different styles of passing are you can pass feet first. So let's imagine, you know, uh, Mentioned Leandro Lowe at the start of the episode, so he's fresh in my mind. Let's imagine someone like Leandro Lowe or Lucas Lepri who would kind of step in with their feet. They would step into De La Hiva because they like to then go to headquarters and do knee cuts and and passes like that, you know, like Leandro Lowe. They're both incredibly famous for knee cuts from that sort of headquarters position, right? So you can pass with this kind of feet first style or you can pass with a chest first style or hands first, right? So it's either feet first or hands first. So your your chest first passing would be, you know, like Bernardo Faria would be like your over under passes, stack passes, you know, those sort of body lock passes, those sorts of passes, right? So there you kind of the two main ones. You can't really pass butt first, right? Like it's a, it's either you're going like hands and chest first. Like like donkey guard? Yeah, donkey guard. <laughs> so you're either going in with your upper body first or your lower body first, right? And then whichever style of passing you do, and, and it's not like you have to do one or the other, you can do both, right? But they, they're your two sort of styles and they each have their own pros and cons. So if you pass feet first, you have the added benefit of being way more mobile because you're on your feet, you're being your your arms and your shoulders and your neck are further away from them. So things like arm bars, cross collar chokes, loop chokes, all those sorts of things are harder to be done to you. Uh, however, your legs are way more accessible, so you're way more vulnerable for people getting in in underneath your legs, whether it's to do bolos, whether it's to do go to X guard in no gi, whether it's to start doing leg entanglements, whatever. Right. If you pass chest first, you obviously counter that. Your legs are further away. It's harder for people to do bolos. It's harder for people to get in under your legs and things like that. The, the negative is that then what is more available for the person playing guard is your upper body. So you're way more vulnerable to um the platters, loop chokes, guillotines, arm drags, all these sorts of things. So no, no position is, is bulletproof. But so they're your two categories, either your two styles, either upper body first or lower body first, right? And then every single pass essentially falls into one of four categories. You can either go around the guard. So think like a a, a Toriando pass or a bullfighter pass. You can go through the guard. Think like if you did a staple pass or, you know, a typical open guard to close guard uh, oh, sorry, open guard to half guard or a knee cut, right? These are all passes through the guard. You could go under the guard like a stack pass or you could go in rare occasions, like this is probably the, the rarer one, but you can go over the guard. So cartwheel guard passes or sometimes, you know, you can shove the knees knees down and 
do a quick like uh, sit to mount, know, sit to mount sort of pass, especially from positions like X guard if you're passing that single leg X. So whether you're chest first or feet first, your pass will fall into to one of those four categories, right? And um, understanding that, I think, for a, a beginner point of view, really helps you kind of focus your attention on on you know what you want to be doing what guard pass you want to be doing and not being completely lost as to how how do i pass someone's guard well regardless of how it's going to fall into one of those it's going to be one of those two methods and then it will go into one of those four categories mm. right because people often are very lost with the complexities of passing guard and it's not like and anyone listening who watches instructionals, you know as well as I do, you could watch an eight-hour instructional and it's just on passing one type of specific De La Hiva. And then they change their grips and it's, oh, you need a new instructional. Like there's so there's too much to know. But the core concepts I feel are what carry you the furthest, give you the building blocks. I was talking to one of my students the other day about um, some half-guard passing and all the techniques uh, they were trying were correct, right? There was nothing from a technical point of view that was wrong. The reasons the passes weren't working is they were just missing some of these underlaying like core sort of, you know, well, if you don't understand these these rules, these fundamentals of the passing, then the, you know, the technique's going to fall flat, right? So, so. I believe understanding these sorts of things will really help you have a better you know, a better understanding of the direction to go, mm. right? Makes perfect sense. What would be your, like, for yourself, which of those do you fall into and do you like to do? I'm definitely chest first, uh, under or through. More specifically, like... So like oh, more, what, what what techniques? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so pressure passing, the pressure passing system, yeah. I'd say. Um, so I'm talking. So what would then be an example of a of a chest first over or or sorry through or or under so guard I was, pass? I was thinking about this um, whether or not a over under would be a under or through, and I think that. Or would it be over? I think it's. I'd be through. Yeah, I think it's through. That's where I was like, you made me doubt myself. But as, I, as, as you were like mentioning them all, I was like running my own game through it. And I was thinking, yeah, so over under is through, uh, despite the name. Uh, double <laughs> under is definitely under. Um, so those are the two, my two A and B games, I'd say. Uh, but at the moment I am experimenting just to try and complete my game with um, more knee cuts, specifically from, like, cause I keep getting a lot of people in the gym at the moment are trying to play... Um, deep half because are they yeah or like variations of like deep half or similar positions oh, we did. i wonder if it's because not that long ago we did some waiter sweeps in the potentially gym. I wonder yeah if it's, and which is for those who aren't familiar with a waiter sweep it's more or less from a deep half guard position yeah so lots of people have been playing that like deep half guard or like trying to get there or playing that half guard like on their side and like really tucked in so a variation of it and trying to like dig the leg um, so I've, I've been finding myself in that position a lot um, with my knee line cleared. And so I'm in a perfect position to knee cut. So I've been yeah. working on knee cut positions and, and uh, half guard passing through, through that very specific guard. But yes, I, I go for the pressure, pressure passing system over under double under and variations thereof for either under or through. Yeah. Chest and first. would you agree that or face you, first. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very face first. I use my, I use my head a lot. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a little bit of a bruise on this left side? Yeah. From, yeah. You see it? Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. A little bit of a lump. Yeah. Was that yeah. from yesterday? Yeah. It was instantaneous. I think it was like a headbutt head clutch. I can't remember who it was with. I think it was with Rob and I like, it hurt like fuck, but I like shrugged it off. I'm like, nah, it sounded worse than it was, man. Like trying to like totally just shake it off. And that, I think that it swelled up instantly. So they're looking at me like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it wasn't until I saw it. They're like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe lose my train of thought with your face bump. <laughs> face um, first. Oh yeah. And would you say that once you adopted this sort of chest first passing, 
Would you agree with the pros and cons that I mentioned where you would find <laughs> that your legs are far harder for people to get in underneath, mm. but on the flip side, people attack more collar chokes, 100%. um the platters, triangles? 100%, specifically triangles. Like I can remember uh, when I first started implementing this game, a very rudimentary version of what I currently do in the first comp. And that was like the world's longest triangle when I got stuck oh, in that yeah. fucking triangle. That was so good. And uh, yeah, <laughs> really good guy. Um, Isaac, shout out to Isaac. Um, yes. So I have gotten way more uh, savvy with defending everything around my neck. Like normally speaking, it's for me, unless you're probably one of the only people that really try and, and do hit an omoplata uh, at the gym on me. Or for my style, but I love them. The platters, yeah, bro. yeah. Not not many people. It's really funny. I used it. to hate them, mm. but uh, yeah, I. It's I don't. It's actually going to almost segue into the next point. Uh, but yeah, I I'll let you I'll let you finish. But yeah, I love mm. them. The platters. Yeah, so they are they are I suppose a, a a simple technique, but very difficult to do. Yeah. So not many people do them, but it, and like the, I would argue as well, they're definitely more gi specific. You yeah. Don't see um the platters not a lot. finished very often in no gi. Yeah. That might result in a sweep, mm. but the lack of friction from the from the gi and the lack of gi grips makes it, you know, when push comes to shove, relatively easy to lose the the elbow. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I do experience a lot of Kimuras uh, and a lot of loop chokes, like j chokes in general, a lot of you know, guillotines, things like that, attacking my neck. So over the time, because I've spent over like, shit, I've spent over a year on it now, I've gotten very comfortable with knowing when I am and when I am not in trouble of my neck, if that makes sense. You should um, have accompanied that year with just doing heaps of shoulder shrugs. Yeah, I got pretty me. decent yeah. sized traps. So yeah. I'm, I'm hard to I'm hard to uh, attack as it is. Like I don't I've got like a, a fat little neck with like big traps. So it's you know it it helps for my uh, my body shape. Um, so <laughs> that definitely that definitely is to my benefit. But no, that's that's my guard style, my guard passing style. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that uh going back to to um, the platters and kind of leading into into my next into my next point which was that um you kind of this is kind of two in one so the first would be that you need to you need to pick a lane right and i guess you could take this as more of a overarching bit of advice for your jujitsu progression but i promise i'll circle it back to to guard passing specifically so it takes an incredibly long time to get better at anything in jujitsu right and the newer you are to it obviously the more frequently you're going to see new things and be trying to implement new things because everything is new almost on a daily basis in the gym you'll see learn something new uh, so you just kind of trying to, you know, th throw shit and see what sticks <laughs> sort of thing. Uh, but you get to a point where you need to, you need to pick a lane. at something you need, you're trying to get better at. Because when I wanted, when I started getting better at Umna Platters, and I don't know where that came from, like why I decided that, that I wanted to do that. Because I hated them for ages, man. And this is, you know, we're probably only going back until, maybe two years ago or something like that. Wow. Or maybe three years ago where I started doing them. Like I hated them up until then. So I was already a black belt and just had no home for Umna Platters. And for some reason, I don't know why, but I just started doing them and completely changed a particular detail about doing them. And long story short, I kind of, instead of going from A to B, I go from A to whatever would be in the middle of A and B. And I have this halfway point that I'm really comfortable in hanging out in. And then I do heaps of stuff from there. So I kind of just completely change the way I do it, go about it. And now I would say it's definitely one of my best techniques, mm -hmm. right? But it took me months to refine it, right? And a while back, again, going back a few years, I decided that 
I wanted to get better at straight footlocks, something that I'd never been particularly good at. You know, people could always, I could never actually get it to a breaking point where people would tap. You know, if I got taps, it was usually just against a lower belt who wasn't super tough, mm. like as in mentally tough or didn't have a high pain threshold. So I was never really good at them, but they obviously work, right? You know, you see guys like Kaya Terra, Mikey Musumeshi, like get straight foot locks mm. in world championships. So they work. And again, it took me months to get it to a point. And it's all I did. Even though that was all I did, that doesn't mean my training was boring and my jiu-jitsu was boring because what if I, you know, I'm trying to work on my umna platters and then you pass my guard straight away, right? Okay, well, I mean, the role keeps going. It's not like all I did was specific training. Oh, you passed reset. No, I still did regular roles or whatever. Or maybe I don't get the umna platter but I sweep you, well, then the role keeps going. So obviously I'm still learning other things, developing other things. It's not like I'm just doing this one thing, but that's the one thing I'm focusing on. I'm trying to do that one thing, but obviously the roles are very dynamic and you often get taken out of that one particular area you want to be working on. So that's why it takes so long. That's why it takes months. Because if I do, you know, five, 10 minute roles in the gym, you know, maybe I only got a handful of opportunities to an attempt to attempt an umna platter. So, you know, it takes months to get enough reps in, in a live rolling environment for you to get better at any particular technique, position, sequence you're trying to work, right? You can't just try it once, twice and go, okay, I've mastered that or, oh, that doesn't work. Let, let me try find the next, you know, golden goose that'll solve the problem. No, sometimes Yes, and what I mean by that is sometimes a technique won't resonate with you and it just doesn't gel with you, it's not for you, cool. But other times it's, it's you know, you just need to put the time in. Totally. Okay, you can't, you know, you can't say, you can't say you, you, uh, you know, like you, let's say, imagine if you, the first piece of pizza you ever had, had anchovies on it and you hate seafood, and therefore you just go, I hate pizza. <laughs> well, <Checks> no, out. <laughs> right? Yeah, if you then try multiple different types of pizza, okay, pizza sucks, I don't like pizza. But otherwise, like, you know, so sometimes you see people try a technique once or twice and then they go like, uh, fuck it. You know, they go, oh man, that's shit. Mm. Like, okay, well, sometimes it might be the case that it's shit for you, but otherwise it's like, no man, like put the time in. Uh, and so you got to pick a lane. What about for those people out there that are struggling to find their lane? They're like, okay, maybe they're six months or 12 months into their journey and they're like, okay, um, I've, I've tried a little bit of everything. I've, I've been in jiu-jitsu long enough to experience overarching concepts. So I've experienced a technique like a knee cut. I've experienced a pressure pass. How, how, what, what advice would you give to those people for finding their lane? Uh, I, in my opinion, you've got to answer that question with – more questions so you could and they're all going to be you know you kind of yeah let me start again so you could answer it simply by going these are the ones i enjoy doing mm -hmm. so you're like oh yeah i know these handful of passes these are the ones i enjoy doing okay i'll lean into that you could also go okay what is uh let me ask my coach's advice. What does he think he or she think will be the most beneficial for my body type? Right? This is some advice I gave to you. And I mentioned specific athletes. I was like, man, watch some of their YouTube. Like mm -hmm. you've got similar body types and physiques and whatever. If you watch the, their highlights and you think that's something you could do, then we can look at that avenue. So you could go things more specific to your body type, which you always want to leverage your body type, right? Be silly to be an incredibly agile human being and not incorporate agility into your jujitsu. Uh, or you could, if you're a complete blank slate and you're like, hey, I don't, I'm, I'm a blob. I have no particular body type. I have no preference that, I, you know, I can take or leave any pass. Which lane should I choose? Well, you could just completely lean until you find your identity, which takes ages, right? You know, uh, Marcelo Garcia, known as, you know, one of the best jiu-jitsu fighters of all time, but also known as one of the best ADCC guys of all time, didn't do no gi till he was a brown belt. So what, what, one of his current identities that he's known for, which is his no gi, he didn't even do it till brown belt, right? So, you know, it can take a long time. 
But if you really, oh, I have no idea. Well, until you get an idea, just lean on your instructor. Just, you know, ask them what is their favorite passes they want to do and just copy them. Mm. You know? This is actually, it reminds me of another bit of advice that, um, that Lachlan Giles gave once. I don't know if it was a YouTube video or if I was talking to him. I can't remember. But it was something along the lines of, you know, I guess it was up the same ballpark as saying, oh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel or, you know, uh, what's, what are those expressions like standing on the shoulders of giants. of giants or whatever. So he was like, man, I would watch footage and of all these people who have tried and tested and proven all these techniques and then leverage that to then, you know, go somewhere else or whatever. So there's a huge amount of professional athletes who have already proven a whole lot of jujitsu, mm. right? So you can't do it all, right? So pick a lane, right? Yeah, that's another one. You could also go, man, I really don't know, don't know, don't know. Okay, well, if you're someone who enjoys watching jujitsu, which fighter do you like to watch? Yep. Just try to copy them, yep, totally. you know? So there's a few ways you can answer that question as to, to picking a lane. But how am I bringing all this back to passing? Well, I'm glad you asked, Kieran, because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so any – if you look at all the best guard passes, or this can also be guard players, right, but if you look at all the best guard passes, I think you'll find that the last 10% of their pass – of the last 10% of when they pass someone's guard always tends to be like the same pass. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a very current example and look at Gordon Ryan. It's pretty much if he gets to half guard, like he's, he's passing you, he's passing you, right? How many times do you see Gordon get like swept or, or not pass the guard once he gets half guard on top, chest to chest, like almost never. How many times do you see, you know, uh, Bernardo Faria not complete the pass once he gets to an over-under? How many times do you not see Leandro Lowe hit his knee cut, you know, when he gets to, to headquarters? You know, so uh, – or how many times do you see him? He's also very well known for his side-to-side Torriando passes, you know. And then it's the same for guard players. Like how many times do you not see – Levi hit a bearing bolo once he gets the drawstring or how many times do you not see Marigali hit the sweep once he gets his deep lasso X in. So even regardless of what guard you're in, you could ask yourself, what, what steps do I need to take to get to my passing position? So a perfect example is, uh, like half guard for me personally, I like to think of myself as a bit of a Gordon Ryan, <laughs> a dickhead. <laughs> uh, no, I, Seconded. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like to pass from half guard. For me, if I can get into your half guard with a cross face, for me, I feel like I'm 90% of the way to, to passing your guard. Not just half guard because half guard could mean I'm in your Z guard or a knee shield or whatever. I mean, if I can get, you know, if I can get a cross face in your half guard, um, that last 10% might take a while, but I feel like I'm 90% of the way there. It's almost like losing weight, right? If someone said mm. they want to lose, and I think even you would know this being a nutritionist, but anyone who's lost weight at any point in their life, it's always the last bit that's the hardest. If you had someone who their goal was to lose 20 kilos, which two kilos are going to be the hardest? Those last two, right? Yeah. You know, I'm not saying the first 18 are easy, but it's always that last bit that's mm. the hardest. Uh, so... So I like to pass half guard as well. So let's say if I were to do a body lock pass, right, I will, yeah, if it takes me straight to side control, awesome. But if that body lock pass progresses me to a half guard where I get a cross face, man, I'll take it. If I do an over under, which isn't one of my A game passes, but I don't mind that position, if I can progress from an over under – and then slide get up and then the, slide yeah. up into half guard. I'll yeah. take that. Yep. You know. So, regardless of the guard you're in, you could think: What steps do I need to take to get to my position of I'm ninety percent of the way there, yeah. right? So that might be yeah. Like you know, if I'm in, if I'm Leandro Lowe, Lucas Lepri, I'm in 
you know, Ollie, you guy at the gym, plays a lot of deep half guard. Okay, if I back out of his deep half guard, I can kind of force him to reverse De La Hiva, you know, depending what he does, obviously. Then from there, I could force him from reverse De La Hiva to headquarters. Oh, look at that. Now I'm in a position to do my knee cut or whatever, right? So if you've chosen your lane and you know the direction you want to go, right, do everything to get to that position. You like to do over-unders. Oh, Adam, how do I pa pass spider lasso? I could show you a spider lasso pass that would end in a knee cut, that would end in a back step, that would end in a stack pass, that would end in an over-under, right? Which of those would you prefer to do? Obviously the one that would take you to an over-under, right? Definitely. Yes, I've said it before in this episode. I'll say it again. There's exceptions to every rule, right? It's, you know, maybe hard to, you feel in someone's X guard, to do a pass that would take you to an over under and then, okay, of course there's always going to be some sort of exceptions, right? But that's kind of, you know, if, if we, if we look at the first ones I'd mentioned about there being in your pass, you're not in their guard, right? And then you understand whether you're someone who wants to go chest first or legs first, you choose your lane as to what you want to do. And then everything you're doing is to keep it in that position. Right. And this goes for a lot of like principles of jujitsu. I, I always say that when I used to train uh, with Levi, it wasn't so much, I mean, yeah, he's crazy good at bolos, but it wasn't that he was so good at bolos that always, you know, impressed me. It was how good he was at keeping the fight in a position that he could bolo from. That's what impressed me. And yeah, he can bolo from multiple positions, but you know, it was the fact that you could never get it to somewhere where bolos weren't a factor. Like he was always able to keep the fight happening on his terms, right? Uh, and a little, little sort of bonus bit related to that reminds me of this guy I used to train with in, uh, in Brazil. And he... I guess this was a next level. He was he he gave me this bit of advice rather than saying rather than what I'm saying now. He used to just say, "Oh, well, I'm going to do whatever they don't want to do." He goes, "For example, if I approach their guard and they're playing seated guard, like so they're sitting up with their back off the mat, it's like, "Well, I'm going to put their back on the mat." And then go from there. If I approach their guard and they're lying down with their back on the mat, He's like, I'm going to force them to sit up. He's like, I'm always going to take them out of the, the position that they want to be in. Right? So it's also another interesting way to think about it, right? But I, I was always impressed with how Levi could keep the fight in the position he wanted it to be in, right? So you were always fighting on his terms. And you look at a lot of the best guys in the world and that's what they do, right? You know, And that goes for not just jiu-jitsu, look at probably one of the best, most dominant uh, control MMA fighters of all time in GSP, right? The fight for any MMA people, you know, you should know who GSP is, George St. Pierre. He would always, like he always had control of the fight. Got a lot of shit for being a boring fighter, but, you know, his amount of control and that it was always on his terms. So think about if you know what sort of pass you like to do, right? Think about, what can you do to get it back to that position? It doesn't always have to be, you know, like, so yeah, let's take half guard, for example. You, so you could be like the opposite of me. I'm someone who's happy to go from an over under and slide up and go to half guard and then do a typical cross face half guard pass. Yep. You're someone who, if you were in half guard and maybe you've already got the cross face, but you're feeling like it's more work than it's worth, or you're feeling like, they're starting to frame and push it off. You're someone who'd be more than happy to slide back down into an over under, you know? So you can all like whatever steps you got to do to get it to your 90%. And then that last 10%, yeah, might take ages, might be a lot of work, but you know, that's your passing position. I think that those, those three all really go together. We got more tips, but those, those three are super helpful. I think for the, the way that you should think about passing guard conceptually and, you know, also then with that in mind, you can build out technically as well. And once you've identified that, that position, that holding position or that like that uh, key position that is your 90% way through, whether or not it is or not, once you've identified it, 
you'll find that you see it or ways you see ways to get there from everywhere. Like it's, it opens up a world of opportunity. Like fuck anything I do gets me to this position. Yeah. You start hunting for it. And once you start looking for it, you, you'll develop paddock pattern recognition and you'll see it everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely and, everywhere. And that's also, I mean, we're now also bleeding into just talking about how to get better at jujitsu and how to progress at jujitsu. Whenever I'm explaining to students at the gym who personally know you and Ollie, I always use you two as, as an example when I'm trying to hammer home the importance of picking a fucking lane and, and working on it religiously you and Ollie are the perfect example of two people who both chose to get better at over unders, right? And what happened when you guys first started them? Well, you, you guys got triangle and um the yep. platted a lot, yep. right? Does that mean over unders don't work? No, it took Bernardo to like five world titles or whatever it was. Like, so very effective pass, right? Murillo Santana does over under stack passes as well. Great way to pass guard. And now, Man, no one in the gym would disagree with the progression in yours and Ollie's guard passing, right? And and your ability not just to do an over-under pass, but to get to the over-under position. You know, Nogi Rob's another example with, his, you know, going down this rabbit hole of wanting to do Kimuras, but he yeah. now, I mean, Rob's a bit comedic, so sometimes he's like, there's Kimuras everywhere. And it's like, Rob, they're on your back. You know? <laughs> Rob, they're in an arm, you got, there's an armbar or Rob, whatever. Rob, you're unconscious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, he's then he is now seeing Kimuras in places that he didn't realise they were there or a possibility totally. or yeah. available. And that only happens with pattern recognition and investing the time, you know, in almost having like blinkers on and yeah. only focusing on that. And so it's, uh, yeah, like I said, I always use you and, and Ollie as an example, but um, – the starting to see it everywhere is is a good, a really good point to make. It's like a fucking light bulb goes off. Like if you, even just walking, even if you're listening to this and this is all brand new to you, maybe you're a white belt or whatever belt and you go to the gym and you just keep these concepts in the back of your mind, I promise you it would be like a light bulb moment has gone off and you're like, holy shit, Adam was right. I see exposition fucking everywhere. Yeah. It, it's almost overnight change. Yeah. You just got to look for it. Yeah. And like, and, and like you said, then you start developing the patterns to get mm -hmm. to, to get to that position. Mm -hmm. All right. Next one. So uh, the next one is seems, seems very obvious, but well, it is, it is obvious, but uh, it's worth mentioning that to understand your, your guard pass, let's point out something very, very simple, which is that you have to separate your opponent's knees from their chest, right? And you probably know the silly example I give in the gym. Yeah. So I do this stupid thing when I'm trying to hammer home this point where I'll lie down and I'll say to a student, I'll say, okay, I'll give you 50 bucks if you can pass my guard, get chest to chest. You're not allowed to submit me and you're not allowed to take my back. It has to be chest to chest, side control or mount, right? I'll give you 50 bucks if you can do it. And all I do is like, like curl up in a ball and wrap my, you know, do like a bicep curl on my hamstrings with my arms to like lock in my knees to my chest, then connect my hands. Like you're some kid doing a roly poly or whatever. Yeah. And like, like it's Im impossible, right? It's a stupid example, but it's just hammering home the point that if you can't, if it's if you can't separate my knees from my chest, you can't get chest to chest, and chest to chest, or you know, or mount, but essentially shoulder blades pinned to the mats. That's side control. Mm -hmm. So that seems like an obvious thing to point out, but it's that's why going back a step. That's why I do really like to pass half guard that's that's why i feel like half guard with a cross face is 90 percent of the way there a because i'm very yeah like because uh positionally the only thing at not being side control is that my legs still trapped but also like you know it's the position i've worked on and i've from a technical point of view feel really comfortable but uh you know that can be half the battle, not, not half the battle, that can be most of the battle a lot of the time. If you've ever trained with 
small, flexible people who are really good at inverting and stuff, man, it is so hard to separate their knees from their chest. And if you can't, like, go, man, go back and watch some, you know, Musameshi or, you know, watch the Meow Brothers when they were, you know, in their, in their prime and competing. Watch how hard it is to pass their guard because the Meow Brothers are like, full flexible they can have their feet touch the mat above their head but still have their lower back on the mat you know like they're full fold in half flexible it is very hard and i'm not talking about well then how do i do that well it depends which of those you know the previous three concepts tips that we've gone over are you doing so it kind of depends but it's just an important Thing to understand because like anything in jiu-jitsu it goes both ways you just reverse this and it's applicable for if we were doing an episode talking about guard retention keep your knees to your chest you know, keep yeah. your knees to your chest yep. so then obviously if i want to get if i want to pass someone's guard i have to remove their knees from their chest mm. which is like i said why i like doing half guard works for for over under is a good one stack passes not the same thing because that actually, you know, want their knees to just a bit different. Yeah. You know, but it's e- one e- of those exceptions that you yeah. keep mentioning. But but easy, easier said than done. It's just a quick one that's that's worth mentioning. A bit cold over there, Kieran. Mate, freezing. I'm looking at <laughs> <Yeah>, it. <I'm like, laughs> right. That's funny, because where we record <laughs> is always very cold. Right? Yeah. And right My apartment. <laughs> yeah. The well, studio. <laughs> <laughs> right before we started right before we started recording, I saw you took your jacket off. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I was like, why is I said why did he take his jacket off? Biggest so, regret. Because I was hot but when we started, but now I've been sitting here for fifty minutes, I'm like getting cold. <laughs> I think I think you could get away with putting your jacket back on mid recording. Okay. Let's let's let's, let's, let's Thank see, you for permission. <laughs> let's see if the people notice. Oh, Kieran's gone. Oh my god! <laughs> I nearly put it on the wrong way. That, that would have been awkward. Good uh, job. Segway. Yep. Uh, yeah, I was watching you. You were over there and had your arms <laughs> crossed. You were shivering. All the goosebumps were coming up on your arms. Hey, do you call them goosebumps or goose pimples? Goosebumps. Yeah, I, some people call them goose pimples. Well, I've even heard like goose flesh. I think that's like a goose flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's like an uh, an American thing. I don't know. Get out of I town. Heard some Kiwi though. say it once, or get out of town. So maybe it's a Kiwi thing. I don't know. Fucking Kiwis. Weirdos. Get out of town, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm cool with Kiwis. They're, They're right. right. Yeah. Do people – I don't this might be a stupid question. Is – like internationally people know Kiwis, the people from New Zealand, or is yeah. that a – Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, well, at least our listeners probably do. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was a – No, no, no. Uh, it, it's pretty – If it yeah. was like, for example, if you meet like Americans or whatever, they won't necessarily know what a bogan is. A bogan, yeah. Right? And you're like, oh, it's like the Australian version of a redneck. Yes. Right? Like, you, know, you have to explain it. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. You know, what's a Chad? Oh, this dude at the gym. Yeah. It's Chad. He's <laughs> real annoying. Right? Uh, nah, I love Chad. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, the next one I want to mention is very, very important for a concept that you need to, not a concept, just a bit of advice especially for competition, right. which is that you have – now Now we've gone through, okay, we've, we're pretty much at the tail end of passing. Man, you must consolidate your pass. <laughs> Three All seconds, right? baby. Yeah. So, okay. If Well, and this even if you're fighting in a rule set that doesn't have points, it's like a – our favorite, no time limit, submission only, right? <laughs> Everyone loves those. Uh, even if you're fighting in one of those, right, you need to consolidate the position. The person can't fight it forever. So for those who don't know, in standard rules with points, it's three seconds that you need to hold a position before you're awarded points. So if someone is passing my guard and they essentially pass it and get to side control, I have three seconds to flop around like a fish out of water to do anything to get my guard back or to roll them over or whatever it is and they won't be awarded points, right? If they pass – think about it like like in wrestling WWE where they're like one – two and then the guy "Ah." (laughs) – it's it's almost like that, you know? So I will fight like a spastic, right? 
for three seconds because if it retains my guard, then there's no points awarded. Mm. So you as the person passing need to know that. So when you pass for three seconds, you're, hold, like, you're trying to hold down a human-sized fish out of water that could just be flapping around. Like, yeah, they might be trying to recover guard technically, you know, from a technical point of view, but in desperate times, calls for desperate measures, you know, when it, when you're doing a really good job to consolidate the side control, they will just start bridging and pushing and squirming and whatever, but they can't maintain that forever. It's incredibly exhausting, right? But if the person on the bottom is educated in these sort of things, right? They know that for three seconds, that's what rec what's required of them. Mm -hmm. And after three seconds, when they know the points have been awarded, then they're going to essentially concede the side control because they can't keep spazzing indefinitely. And then they'll be like, oh, and you'll be able to settle in and then they're going to work their technical escapes or whatever. And you see that, go watch some professional fights. You'll see every single guard pass is, is finished with like – two or three seconds of absolute all out trying not to let the person consolidate. And then you'll see after a few seconds, they kind of go, Oh, you know, mm -hmm. and accept it. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so you have to consolidate your yeah. part. And this goes for everything. Anytime there's a point scoring position, same as a takedown, you take someone down. If you don't hold them down for three seconds, you can take them down and they can land flat on their back, but there's no ipongs in jujitsu like judo. You could throw them, they land flat on their back, but if you don't hold them down for three seconds and they just get back up, you don't get any points. Mm -hmm. If you sweep someone and they instantly get up and run away or they instantly roll you back, you don't get your points, right? You have to consolidate. And again, goes both ways. So if you're the person being swept, being passed, being taken down, even if you don't know what to do, you've got three seconds of being a spaz, mm. right? Let's go hard. Go hard. And then after that, Okay, relax, because you can't do that forever. So you need to – more. This, I guess this is actually more hammering home. The mistake is usually made on the conceding end. You see it in the gym all the time. All right, guys, we're doing specific pass, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And you see people get their guard pass, and it's like the millisecond the person on top gets chest to chest, they go, oh, good pass. Like, no, nah, man, like you had three more seconds you were allowed to fight that. It wasn't over yet. I try to keep a, a like a mental clock. In my mind, like count to, to three. In my, like yeah. I don't actually go one, two. I, mean, like, <laughs> I look over him. One, one, two. Coach, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> and I like, like, yeah, I try to keep that in my mind and um, yeah, do anything you can to consolidate or do anything you can to not let them consolidate turtle, whatever, like concede an advantage even is better yeah, than yeah. the points. So th I think that reminds me, this concept reminds me of what you were saying in one of the previous points is to not let them – don't walk into someone's guard. Don't let them establish. And the point I'm, I'm trying to link them is you do all that work to pass. Why would you give oh, it up bro, it's the by worst. not doing like the last little bit, like the last 1% of effort, hold them down, yeah. hold them down. Yeah, You've just worked your ass off to pass this like unpassable guard or like this, whatever. You, you worked your ass off to pass guard, hold them down, regardless, whether it's in training, whether it's on the competition, concede, your, your passes, consolidate yeah, your passes. It's incredibly right. frustrating when you essentially pass someone but don't establish. Very frustrating. Bro, it's like, man, mm. it's like you were 99% of the way mm. there. Mm. You're like- Got to be aggressive. It's up there with like when you hit a takedown and they pop back up. Yeah. Like they, you, you have that scramble, you can't grab onto them and they pop back up and you're like, fuck. Because you use all that energy to take them down, you couldn't consolidate. It's passing, exact same. Consolidate that shit. It's like just being so close to finishing and then yeah. something and then, you know. You, you got to sneeze. And then, <laughs> and, what? And, and, <laughs> actually, let me tell you a funny story, all right? Is this PG-13 or? <laughs> no, definitely not. We're an hour in. The sensors have moved on. <laughs> so, this friend of mine in Brazil um, and he told me this really <laughs> – <laughs> he told me this really funny story. I thought it was hilarious. And it won't be lost in translation, but it was just the, I don't know, I guess the words that get used for it in Portuguese. I found, I found this story hilarious. But there was this girl that he was, um, you know, kind of that elusive girl that was never obtainable. And all these, you know, times they potentially could have hooked up but never did and it just – 
things seem to always get in the way and whatever. And then, um, <laughs> and then one day, like the, the stars aligned, and he finally like was hooking up with this chick that he'd been like wanting to be with for for years, right? When he was a teenager, early adult, and then <laughs> went went back to her house, and um, you know, and things are getting heavy, and they're fooling around, and so they start sleeping together, and he was like, man, it had been. It had been like built up for so long, like oh, no. hooking up with this girl that he was like, I was so excited. He was like, I was like, because <laughs> so I'm sleeping with her. And he's like, he's like, so I was like, one, two. And then he was like, man, I was about to go. Oh, and, no. And, and he was, and he was, and he was like, so, so I was like, oh, wait, hang on, hang on. I got a cramp. I got a cramp. I got a cramp. <laughs> and then he was, like, he was like, so I was faking a cramp in my leg <laughs> to calm things down. And then no. he was like, and then while I was faking a cramp, he's like, her parents got home and then like, and then that was it. And he was like, <laughs> and it was like, and I never got to, and then it was like just this one-off hookup. It yeah. wasn't like she then went on to become his girlfriend. He was like, yeah. and that was it. He's like, and so I never got to, you know, that's what it feels like when you're so, <laughs> so close to, to passing someone's guard. <laughs> And they and you don't establish, you don't console it. What a perfect analogy. Right? That was a pretty good analogy. That was great. Right? So yeah. hopefully you remember that story when if you, you pass if, God. <laughs> Consolidate. Yeah. yeah, next time. Imagine. Make sure you finish. Yeah. That's the moral of the story. Yeah. Or if you're getting your guard pass, you might be like, hey, I got a cramp, got a cramp, yeah. got a cramp. Yeah. <laughs> then hope the timer runs out. Uh, I don't think that would work in a comp. No, uh, no, no I definitely not. I don't think cramping is a. And that a, counts as tapping. Uh, I think the, uh, you get, you get a, I don't know, I actually don't know what the rules are give you but you definitely get time if like you know if you get accidentally hit in the groin yeah you definitely get well, i don't know what it is yeah there would be in the rules there would be a, a maximum amount of time yeah. that you'd be allowed for sure uh if you got accidentally like poked in the eye mm. i believe you get given time so just fake an eye poke yeah but i like not even near you like there there are any <laughs> hips <You're> like, oh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm from the brazilian football team yeah oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> watching too uh, much football but anything anything else like it, you know it, you know so sometimes people might get hit you know they might be like oh the dude like punched me or whatever like if you were getting hit to the extent that required you to be given a timeout the guy would have to be guy or girl would have to be hitting you in a way that would disqualify them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, who was it was cyborg who got disqualified. I believe it was against Gordon Ryan uh, for like his snap down yeah. sort of clinches yeah. being strikes. labeled as strikes. Yeah. One of my friends got disqualified for that as well. Uh, There's like an infamous video of a fight that broke out in the finals of some random jujitsu comp where uh, they were basically, that was happening. The guy was like going for an aggressive clinch the whole match and they're pretty much strikes. And the other guy got jack of it and just bitch slapped him. Oh yeah. And then the guy that bitch slapped him got DQ. Yeah, so he that. looks like the villain. Cause yeah, he yeah. looks like he just lost his cool and just slapped him out of nowhere. When you clip just that section of the video. Of course. But yeah. when you watch the entire video, the other guy was That's, a massive dick. Yeah. And right. the ref was so unqualified. Like she was just, Man, I don't know a full story, but she just could not handle the situation. It yeah, was yeah, yeah. it was really bad. It was such an amateur started, hour. Yeah. yeah, started screaming and crying. Yeah, she well, started man, fighting. she had no control of the situation at all. And I think this came up in a previous episode where we uh, kind of pointed out, oh, isn't it funny when shit hits the fan? Even grapplers result to striking. Yeah, I think we briefly, monkey instincts. We we said yeah, yeah like chest we, beating. We, yeah, rah, rah, that's rah, right. Smash. Think, yeah, talk yeah. about there must be something primal in it. About, yeah, yeah, you know, smashing stuff. And Considering like they're both like you know competitive jujitsu players, and then when they're getting in a fight, they go for a slap. It's like I don't know. Well, actually, even think like you know having a, a three year old. Obviously, now at three, he's old enough where he's seen people hit stuff. Mm. But even when he was younger to that, like you get toddlers where like they haven't learned what punching and hitting is, but when they're frustrated, like they bang things yeah. and they'll, they'll like hit, strike. They'll yeah. hit you. Like mm. it's obviously got to be something very primal and instinctual about it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, so they, those are the five 
I'll go over them again. Mm. So buckle up for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it all again. <laughs> um, so, so the five that I think re- will really help your passing. And again, s- some of these are also just ways to learn jujitsu, progress jujitsu, get better at jujitsu. But here are the five again, right? If you want to, you know, run and get your pen and paper, I'll give you a minute. Got it. Kieran's got it. Let's Everyone go. else just paused the podcast. <laughs> <they've had> the <laughs> <pen and> paper. <laughs> uh, is so remember they're in your pass, right? Don't don't go into their guard, right? Put them into your passing. Okay. Think about the different categories of guard passes there are. So you can be chest first or feet first, and then all your passes are typically going to be round the guard, under the guard, through the guard, or over the guard. Right. Uh, Choose a lane that you want to that you want to be in, and then you do everything to get back to that passing position, right? To get to your ninety percent, so then you can complete the next ten percent, right? Understanding that it's crucial to separate the knees from the chest. Easier said than done, right? But if you can't get chest to chest, you can't pass guard. And then make sure you consolidate your guard pass. Three seconds. You just tell yourself that for three seconds they are going to fight with 200%, right? So you have to match that. Okay? If not, you'll be like my friend in Brazil, forever sad <laughs> that you didn't consolidate. <laughs> and, yeah, man, for the love of God, stop walking into people's clothes guards just so you can do another deadlift and stand up. Yeah, It's different if someone puts you in their clothes guard. Don't walk don't, into it. Don't go into it. Right, God, that's like me escaping Joey's side control. I let him armbar me, <laughs> escape the armbar. Terrible advice. Don't do it. <laughs> I don't let him do that. It's just how it tends to play out. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so they're my they're my tips for passing guard. There were other ones we mentioned, you know, briefly at the start. Keeping the ball in their half of the court is going to just create more passing opportunities. Similar to making sure they're in your pass and you not in their guard. I expect everyone to be guard passing machines by the time you listen to this. Not by the time you listen to it, after you've listened to it. Which would be now. Which would be now if you're still with us. (laughs) And if you're not, you're not hearing this, so it doesn't matter. So fuck you. Um, (laughs) Remember, none of this is applicable to purple belts. Correct. (laughs) No one likes you. Yep. You think you're better than a blue belt and you think you deserve a brown belt. But you don't. But you don't. <laughs> nah, purple's cool. I don't know why the colours are they are. You think they're not cool because you don't have one. I bet you you'll love a purple belt when you're wearing one. Yeah, p- sure, maybe one day. Yeah. I'll never get it. I remember when I first started jujitsu, I was a super young, ignorant person. I was like, purple, gay colour. <laughs> so, so stupid. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> so stupid. But now purple's cool. Yeah. Oh, no problem with purple. You Black don't even style. have any stripes on your belt yet, kid. You're ages away. <laughs> that was so funny the other the other day in the gym. People were like, uh, oh. so even people who don't train in the gym, they know who No Gi Robbie is. Yeah. And some someone was like, what was it like? Oh, Kieran doesn't have any stripes. Oh, because you had told me you're not doing the upcoming competition. Yeah, yeah I get to work. Mm. I also didn't do the last seven. Mm. Uh, and <laughs> but yeah, I've only done two this year. Man, it's not good. It's like almost September. How many uh, – will you do another comp this year? Yeah, definitely. You're supposed to do six a year. Yeah, I'll be doing six. No, you won't. Yeah, I will. You better do two more. I will. Anyway. And uh, <laughs> someone was like, why, do, why doesn't Kieran have any stripes? And I was like, I was like, Kieran's not doing the comp. I was like, I'll give Nogi Rob a stripe before I give Kieran a stripe. <laughs> and then I did <laughs> that same day. And then it was so funny. Rob was like, because I called Rob up. I was like, Rob, here's a stripe. And he was like, oh. And then he went back to line. He was like, oh, he's obviously going to call Kieran up now for a yeah, stripe. No. And then and then I was like, all right, <laughs> guys, thanks. High fives. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> I don't want I don't want your pity stripe. I don't want your stripes. I don't want your crap tape. Yeah, man. Get your get your chemist tape away from me. My own stripes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine every every day you get home, you every day before you leave for the gym, you take the stripes off. <laughs> Come train, you get home, you're like, I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> put, the, put the stripes back <laughs> on. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you very much for listening. Hope you got something out of this episode. As always. 
you know where you can follow us. Instagram at beyond jujitsu underscore podcast. If you want some more, we got the Patreon. If you want to join the team, cool. We didn't mention it at the start, so by now it's a little too late, but still having technical difficulties. We've only got one camera for anyone who's watching on YouTube. We typically have the two cameras. One They'll be the, back next time. Yeah, one of the cameras is still undergoing a service. Mm. So it's uh, we got one that – you probably figured that out if you've listened this, this, to this much on, like on, on YouTube. An hour and ten minutes, like, oh my god! <laughs> They're like, there is only one oh, camera. Oh no way! <laughs> now uh, you tell me. <laughs> I don't want to watch this. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the plan, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Send them through. We mm. got Ask a Black Belt episode one hundred and ten, five episodes time. We do have some questions sitting in the bank, uh, waiting audio questions. So I think we have spot for maybe one or two more. Yep. Just submit your submit your questions. Yep. Uh, and yeah, guys, we'll uh, catch you next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>